All right, thank you guys. Welcome to our NBA video here today for Monday, April, I think it's 25th uh, or 26th. I forget. But anyway, if you're new here, I just want to let you know that my name is Brock Page and I do sports picks for free right here on YouTube. And apparently I don't keep good record of the date either. But anyway, I'll tell you this much. I'm feeling great on a Monday morning because we're coming fresh off a 4-1 day yesterday on my Patreon website. That's going to put us at 2-0 in our last two board member tier package picks on my Patreon page. We're also 3-0 and in our last three extra daily pick tier package plays on that site as well. And if you want to access today's extra daily pick, it's only going to cost you just $2.99. Now, we currently have over 1,405 members who are signed up and active on that page. And if you want to see which one of these YouTube picks I'm actually betting on personally, link for that site is in the description section below. That's patreon.com slash Brock Page. With that, guys, got ourselves a pretty big slate of NBA action here today, so let's go ahead and dive into it. We're going to start with the Spurs taking on the Wizards, 7 p.m. Eastern start time. The San Antonio Spurs are minus 2.5, totals 228. If you like the Wizards in a slight upset at home, they're plus $1.15 on the money line. Now, the Wizards' leading scorer, Bradley Beal, is questionable for today's contest. He's currently battling a leg injury. Meanwhile, Roy Hachimura, he's also listed as questionable with knee problems as well. And despite a recent stroke of good fortune for Washington backers here recently, we're still looking at a Wizards club who's six games below 500, and they have a losing record on their home court. Now, the Wizards' biggest problem this year is their defense. They rank in the bottom three defensively in home points allowed. They're also in the bottom five in home offensive rebounding as well. They're taking on a San Antonio squad who plays their best basketball away from home. San Antonio 17-10 straight up as the road team. And they successfully covered the point spread in over 70% of those ball games. San Antonio's played really superb defense when traveling as well. They rank in the top 10 in points allowed on the road, top 5 in defensive 3-point percentage. DeMar DeRozan scoring 21 points a game, 4 rebounds, 7 assists for the starting forward. Meanwhile, Derek White scoring 15.5 points per contest himself. Three rebounds, three assists for the guard. The Spurs allow just 108 points per contest when they travel. They're also in the top 10 in defensive field goal percentage on the road. Now, total-wise, eight out of uh, San Antonio's last 10 meetings with Washington got over the line. Meanwhile, the Wizards saw their last two straight ball games get over the posted total themselves. I'm going to lean toward... San Antonio Spurs minus two and a half in the over 228. Next game, Thunder versus the Sixers, seven o'clock Eastern tip off. The Philadelphia 76ers are minus 11, totals 219. Now, I'll tell you this much Philly's really banged up right now. Their top two scorers, uh, Embiid and Harris, they're both listed as questionable. Meanwhile, Ben Simmons, he's currently out for tonight's contest. And Furkan Korkmaz, he may not play uh, in this one either. And uh, I'll tell you this much, regardless of those injuries, we're still looking at a Philly squad who just hasn't played good basketball lately. They're currently in the middle of a four-game losing streak, and they failed to cover the point spread in seven out of their last nine. Now, Philly's in the bottom 10 in offensive free throw percentage, bottom 10 in second quarter points allowed, they're taking on a Thunder team who successfully covered the point spread in two out of their last three. And they still find themselves one of the better road covering teams in the West. OKC's currently 18 and 12 against the number when they travel. And that's good for 60% in that category. And despite the absence of Hall and Dort, uh, along with the potential absence of Mike Muscala, we're still looking at an Oklahoma City squad who's led by Darius Baisley. Who's actually scoring over 13 a night, along with seven rebounds and one and a half assists. Now, the OKC Thunder, they are one of the better offensive rebounding teams in the entire league right now. They're actually currently in the top five in road offensive rebounding. They're also in the top three in the association in defending the three ball on the road. They're currently holding their opponents to just 33% shooting 
from beyond the arc when they travel. So certainly keep those factors in mind if you're looking to bet on this game here. Now, total-wise, five out of OKC's last eight stayed under the line. They're also 20 and 10 to the over officially as the road team. Meanwhile, the Sixers are 70% to the under in their last 10. I'm going to lean toward the OKC Thunder plus 11 and the under 219. Next matchup, still in the 7 o'clock slate. Hawks versus the Pistons, 7 p.m. Eastern start time. The Atlanta Hawks are minus three, numbers 217 flat. Despite the absence of some uh, top guys here recently, the Atlanta Hawks just keep on rolling. They're four months straight up in their last five, seven to two straight up in their last nine. Now, the Hawks have been cashing in uh, for their backers recently as well. They've covered the number in seven out of their last nine ball games. Now, Atlanta's in the top three in defending the three ball, top 10 in defensive rebounding as well. And despite the absence of Trey Young and possibly DeAndre Hunter and Chris Dunn, John Collins is scoring nearly 18 points a game, along with seven rebounds. Clint Capella is also bringing down over 14 rebounds a night, along with 15 and a half points a game. They're taking on a Pistons squad who's 25 games below 500, and they lost seven out of their last nine ball games. Now, Detroit's really struggled offensively this season. They're in the bottom five in home offensive field goal percentage, and they score only 106 points a game. Roddy Magruder and Dennis Smith Jr., they're both out today as well. And when it comes to the total in this one, Detroit's last two straights stayed under the line, 70% to the under in their last 10. Meanwhile, five out of Atlanta's last eight stayed under the total themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Atlanta Hawks minus three in the under 217. Next contest, Lakers, Magic, 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off. The Los Angeles Lakers, they are the 10-point favorite on the road, laying double digits here, totals 209.5. And, and as bad as Orlando is, the Lakers have been playing some pretty bad basketball recently themselves. The Lakers are currently on a three-game losing streak, and they also failed to cover the point spread in five out of their last seven. Now, Gasol, Davis, Caldwell, Pope, and Schroeder, they're all listed as questionable for Los Angeles. Now, the Lakers are in the bottom 10 in the league in scoring on average per contest. Certainly not prolific uh, scores this year. They're also in the bottom 10 in shooting the three ball. The Lakers are scoring just 107 points a night when they travel. They're taking on an Orlando team who's 7-3 against the spread in their last 10 meetings with Los Angeles. Despite a pretty bad stretch of games over the past month or so, Orlando recently covered the point spread against the likes of Chicago and Indiana. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, Orlando doesn't do too much well. <laughs> They're just a well-rounded, bad basketball team. Having said that, though, they actually are still in the top 10 in the entire NBA in offensive rebounding. And when it comes to the total in this one, somehow the Magic saw six out of their last seven ball games get over the number, even with all their injuries recently. Meanwhile, the Lakers saw seven out of their last 10 get over the line themselves, even with all their injuries. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the underdog Orlando Magic plus 10 and the over 209 and a half. Next contest, Suns versus the Knicks should be a good one. 7.30 p.m. East. The Phoenix Suns are minus two on the road, totals 214 and a half. But despite being good at pretty much everything all year long, this recent road trip hasn't been all too kind to the Suns here recently. They're currently on a two-game losing streak. They also failed to cover the point spread in five out of their last six. Now, Jay Crowder's listed as questionable. Galloway, Nader, and Sarich, they're all questionable as well. Now, uh, there's not many problem areas for Phoenix, but... Just one small problem area for the Suns is offensive rebounding. They're actually in the bottom three in the NBA in road offensive rebounding. They're also, uh, they've been getting off to slow starts on the road as well. They're in the bottom 10 in first quarter scoring. Now, Phoenix is taking on a New York team who's dominated all season long defensively. New York currently leads the NBA in points allowed. They're first in defensive field goal percentage as well. 
New York gives up just 104 points per contest. And they currently find themselves 21-10 and 10 straight up at Madison Square Garden. Julius Randle scoring 24 points a game, 10.5 rebounds, 6 assists for the forward. Meanwhile, R.J. Barrett scoring over 17.5 points a night himself, 5 rebounds, 3 assists for Randle. Now, the Knicks hold their opponents to just 33% shooting from beyond the arc. They're also covering in 68% of their contests at MSG. Now, total-wise, oddly enough, New York saw their last two straight get over the total, 7-2 to the over in their last nine. And meanwhile, three out of Phoenix's last four got over the total themselves, 6-3 and three to the over in their last nine. I'm going to lean toward the New York Knicks plus two, and the over 214 and a half. Next contest, Cavaliers versus the Raptors, 7.30 p.m. Eastern start time. The Toronto Raptors are the 10-point favorite. Totals 216 and a half. And as good as they've been recently, I just don't think Toronto is good enough to be laying double digits in any type of spot, whether they're home, away. Uh, they're just not a, a double-digit laying team this year. They're They're Currently 10 games below 500 for the season, and they rank in the bottom three in offensive rebounding. As a matter of fact, Toronto is one of the worst rebounding teams in the entire league, as they're also in the bottom 10 in defensive rebounding as well. Now, Harris and Hood are questionable. Watson is out. Toronto's taking on a Cleveland squad who ranks in the top 10 in the NBA in road points allowed. Very good defensively uh, when they travel. Cleveland's holding their opponents to just 109 points a game away from their home court. Now, Colin Sexton, he has not been ruled out. He is currently day-to-day -day after suffering uh, a concussion a few days ago. Collins is scoring 24.5 points a game, along with three rebounds and four assists. Meanwhile, Darius Garland is scoring over 17.5 points a game himself, two rebounds, six assists for the guard. When it comes to the total in this one, Cleveland's 19 and 13 to the under when they travel. Toronto's 4 and 3 to the under in their last seven. I'm going to lean toward the Cleveland Cavaliers plus 10 and the under 216 and a half. Next matchup, getting into that 8 o'clock slate. I'm talking about the Clippers versus the Pelicans, 8 o'clock Eastern tip off. The Clippers are minus two, totals 228 and a half. Now, Kawhi Leonard's still out for Los Angeles. Kennard and Rondo potentially out for the Clippers as well. Having said that, though, we're still looking at a Clipper team who's winning games without Kawhi lately. Los Angeles has won their last four straight, and they've actually gone 11-1 straight up in their last 12. Now, the Clippers are currently leading the NBA in three-point percentage. They're actually drilling 42% of their three balls as a team. Paul George is dropping 24 points a game. Six and a half rebounds and five assists for the starting guard. George is also draining 43% of his three balls. Meanwhile, Marcus Morris is making 48% of his three-pointers as well. Morris is also averaging nearly 14 points a game, along with four boards. Now, the Clippers are in the top three in defensive rebounding, and they allow just 107 points a night on the road. They're taking on a Pelicans team who's eight games below 500 right now, They've also lost five out of their last six. Now, in addition to losing a handful of games here recently, New Orleans also failed to cover the point spread in seven out of their last 10 outings. Now, the Pelicans' biggest issue this season is their defense. They're in the bottom five defensively in points allowed. They're also in the bottom three in defending the three ball as well. New Orleans gives up 115 points a game and they let their opponents make almost 40% of their three-pointers against them. Now, of course, Hart and Alexander Walker, they're still out. Johnson and Adams, they are questionable. And when it comes to the scoring in this one, three out of New Orleans' last four did get over the number. 23-9 and nine to the over at the Smoothie King Center. Meanwhile, the Clippers saw six out of their last 10 meetings with New Orleans get over the line themselves. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward... The L.A. Clippers minus two and the over 228 and a half. Next contest, Jazz, Timberwolves, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Utah Jazz are minus nine and a half, totals 228. Now, Utah's won six out of their last nine ball games, 44 and 16 overall for the season. The Jazz have been outstanding offensively. 
They currently lead the NBA in offensive rebounding, top three in scoring on average per contest. And in addition to scoring over 116 points a night, Utah is drilling nearly 40% of their three-pointers. Mike Conley scoring over 16 points a game, three rebounds, six assists for the guard. Conley's also drilling 41% of his three-pointers. Meanwhile, Jordan Clarkson scoring 17.5 points a game off the bench himself. Four rebounds, couple assists for Clarkson. Utah ranks in the top three in the league in defensive field goal percentage. And they allow only 107 points a game. They're taking on a Minnesota squad who's won 10 of 29 home games. That's it. And they currently find themselves 27 games below 500. Now, the T-Wolves have really struggled on the defensive end of the court all season long. They're currently in the bottom three in points allowed. They're also dead last in defending the three ball. Minnesota gives up 118 points a game. And they're letting their opponents make 40% of their three-pointers on them. Now, total-wise, six out of Minnesota's last 10 meetings with Utah did stay under the number. Meanwhile, the Jazz saw their last three straight contests stay under the line as well. Uh, In addition to that, they are 6-3 and to the under uh, in their last nine. I'm going to lean toward the Utah Jazz minus 9.5 and and the under 228. Next contest, still in that 8 o'clock slate, I'm talking about the Bulls versus the Heat, 8 o'clock east. The Miami Heat, they're minus 5.5, numbers 205. Miami's won four out of their last five ball games, 4-1 and one against the spread in those five outings as well. Despite the potential absence of Dragic, Hero, and Nunn here this evening, the Heat's still led by Jimmy Butler, who's scoring 21 points a night, along with seven rebounds and seven assists. Bam Adebayo is also scoring 19 points a game himself, along with nine boards and five assists as well. Miami's one of the better defensive teams uh, in the entire NBA. They're in the top three in points allowed, top three in defensive field goal percentage. As a matter of fact, Miami gives up just 107 points per contest. Now they're taking on a Chicago team who's still going to work without their best player, Zach Levine. The Bulls have also, uh, they are currently 10 games below 500. They've gotten the W in only 13 out of 30 road games. Now, Chicago's played consistently bad defense late in games. They're in the bottom 10 in third quarter points allowed on the road. And even worse than that, the Bulls are currently dead last in the entire association in fourth quarter points allowed on the road as well. Now, when it comes to the number in this one, two out of Chicago's last three got over the line. 60% to the over in their last 10. Meanwhile, Miami saw their last two straight get over the total themselves. Four and three to the over in their last seven. I'm going to lean toward the Miami Heat minus five and a half in the over 205. Next contest, it is going to be Grizzlies versus the Nuggets. Nine o'clock Eastern start time. Now, the Denver Nuggets are the four-point favorite. Total's 228. But despite a real nice run of straight-up victories here recently, I'll tell you this much, the Nuggets have really struggled to cover the point spread over the past few weeks or so. Uh, More specifically, Denver's currently 0-4 against the spread in their last four straight, 2-7 against the number in their last nine. Now, Denver's also consistently struggled to cover the point spread at the ball arena this season as well. They've covered in only 13 of 31 home games. Now, the Nuggets are currently in the bottom 10 in the league in defensive field goal percentage. In addition to that, they're also in the bottom 10 in third quarter points allowed at home. Barton and Morris are still out indefinitely. Nothing really changing with their statuses. I'm not even sure we're going to see them in action this year uh, anymore. But anyway, the Nuggets are taking on a Memphis squad who's on a two-game winning streak and went 7-1 and one against the spread in their last eight ball games. You're certainly cashing a ton of tickets uh, here lately if, you're, if you've been betting Memphis. Now, the Grizzlies are one of the best road-covering teams in the West. They're 20-10 and 10 against the point spread in their 30 road games, 18-12 and 12 straight up in those very same road contests. Memphis scores a whole bunch of points when they travel. They're in the top three in road scoring, top three in road offensive field goal percentage. John Morant scoring 19.5 points per night, 
Three rebounds, seven assists for the starting guard. Meanwhile, Jonas Valanciunas, he's healthy and back in the lineup. He's dropping 17 a night along with 12 and a half big rebounds. Now, total-wise, Memphis went 70% to the over in their last 10 ball games, 20 and 10 to the over when they travel. Meanwhile, the Nuggets are 4 and 2 to the over in their last six themselves, 20 and 11 to the over at the ball arena. I'm going to lean toward the Memphis Grizzlies plus five in the over 228. With that, guys, now it is time for our next and final matchup for the show. It is going to be Mavericks versus the Kings. 10 p.m. Eastern tip-off. The Dallas Mavericks are minus six. Totals 223 and a half. And if you like the Kings in an upset at home here, they're plus $1.90 for some money line cash. And as bad as Sacramento's been here recently, they've actually covered their fair share of point spreads over the past few weeks or so. The Kings are uh, currently 4-1 against the spread in their last five ball games, And believe it or not, they're still amongst the best scoring teams in the association right now. Sacramento currently ranks in the top 10 in scoring, top three in offensive field goal percentage. Buddy Heald scoring over 16.5 points a game, four rebounds, three assists for the starting guard. Meanwhile, Harrison Barnes is scoring 16 points a night himself, six rebounds, three and a half assists for the veteran forward. Sacramento scores 116 points a game at the Golden One Center. They're taking on a Mavericks team who's a little bit banged up right now. Their top two scorers, Luka Doncic and Kristaps uh, Porzingis, they both may not play here tonight. Both are listed as questionable for today's action. Meanwhile, Terry's out uh, and uh, Richardson and Kleba, they're also listed as day-to-day -day as well. Now, Dallas has really struggled against the number here recently. They're just 3-7 and seven against the spread in their last 10 ball games. They're also in the bottom 10 in first quarter scoring. Now, total-wise, Dallas is 17-12 and 12 to the under on the road. Uh, plus, they're leaving a lot of potential points on the table with the uh, current injury report. Meanwhile, Sacramento saw six out of their last 10 stay under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Sacramento Kings plus six and the under 223.5. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our quick pick recap. Power to you by my Patreon website. I like San Antonio, minus 2.5, over 228. OKC, plus 11, under 219. Atlanta Hawks, minus 3, under 217. Orlando Magic, plus 10, over 209 and a hook. New York Knicks, plus 2, over 214 and a half. Cleveland, plus 10, under 216 and a half. LA Clippers, minus 2, over 228 and a hook. Utah Jazz, minus 9 and a half, under 228. Miami Heat, minus five and a half, over 205. Memphis, plus five, over 228. And before I give you my next and final free pick for the video, one final reminder that we are 2-0 in our last two board member tier package picks on my Patreon website. We're also 3-0 in our last three extra daily pick tier package plays on that Patreon page as well. I'm going to lean toward the Sacramento Kings, plus six, and the under 223 and a half. With that, guys, now it's time for our YouTube shout outs to our top 10 YouTube commenters over the past couple of days or so. Shout out to Udit Jane, Slum Lord, Compton Rob, Risty Plum, Rowan Sumrall, Thomas Reason, Stephen Quintanilla, Mike Wilkerson, Travis Jones, and last but certainly not least, gotta give a shout out to my good friend, Albert Opunyi. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you guys decide to get a package here today, just keep in mind, Patreon's going to bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. So we are approaching the end of the month here. If you get a package here today, you're going to get billed today and then you're going to get billed again on May 1st. So you may want to hold off until May 1st uh, you know, to get max value for your money. Having said that, though, we've been on a real nice, you know, run of games here. Once again, we're coming off a four in one day. So you may want, you may not want to hold off until May 1st. You know, you may want to get on board now, but once again, I have to remind you, uh, you know, just for some integrity purposes, uh, Patreon bills you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me 
right here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy Monday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash Brock Page.